from uh, Winemaker West Park, and here we are today with uh, Peter Mathis, who is the head winemaker at uh, Ravenswood, internationally known Ravenswood, and also the owner, uh, grower, and winemaker at. Uh, hey, allow me. Mathis says to know. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Peter, why don't you tell us uh, quickly about Mathis Grenache first? Well, Mathis Grenache, it's, it's really a lifelong project for me. I had a vision of. Uh, of what I wanted to make in 1987. I would, somebody asked me, somebody asked me what, if I could only drink one wine for the rest of my life, what would it be? And I knew right away that it would be a Grenache-based wine. I was thinking at the time of a uh, Southern Rhone wine. But I, I had been making things all my life. I made, I was making furniture at the time, and I, um, I just realized it came over me. I wanted to actually make the thing. I didn't want to just go buy it at the store. I wanted to make it and then drink it for the rest of my life. And um, it took me about 20 years to pull it off. But here it is. It's, uh, I started the project in 88. First vintage released in uh, 2007. The 2004 vintage released in 2007. Very good. Uh, tastes Let's pause for one uh, Tastes like a little bit more than Grenache. It's definitely more than Grenache. It's a, um, like the French wine, which is typically it's blended with Syrah and Morvet. Uh, this is a blend of more than Grenache. Um, by the time I got down to the actual grafting of the wine, I had realized that I wasn't really comfortable using the French recipe. That the Syrah and the Morvet in the U.S. don't really perform the way they do in France. I ended up choosing Carignan, Petite Syrah, and Alicante Boucher. And it's field blended, the kind of the old school way. It's actually interplanted in the field of Grenache, and I co-ferment it. It's like, it's like cooking. I think it's really important to get the different varieties in the pot early on. So I actually pick them all together, co-ferment them. I think it makes the best wine. You're really committed to it at that point, but it really comes together. There's a, uh, there's a lot of people out there that like to uh, blend the, after they do the fermentation just to make sure they get the strengths of each grape. So it's nice to see you doing your own thing. It's, it's scarier. You know, it's a real commitment to go that way. But it, I really, no matter how many times I do this trial, I always prefer it when I blend it at the fermenter than later. Excellent. Uh, can you tell us maybe just a few words about what it's like to do everything yourself? Uh, versus managing a team of winemakers as you uh, as you do to, uh, to make the Ravenswood wines? It's really rewarding for me to do the whole project kind of from start to finish. I actually cleared the land myself, planted these vines. Actually, I didn't plant every single vine, but I planted a lot of them. Do the pruning. I ride my tractor through there. I sometimes I'm in there until it's it's way too late to see. You know, it's like I, it's totally dark and I'm driving by moonlight through the vineyard. Tractor is the best um, part. It is. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be on a tractor? That's right. Come on. We're men. And uh, it's fun. It's fun. It's really wonderful. It, Ravenswood is a large, very large, very successful business. And it's I get to work with some fabulous people there. I get to work with great wines. But it's nice to have a project where it's just it's just me. Just me yeah. Buck stops here. It does. Well, Peter Mathis, thank you very much. And I hope you uh, wish you all the uh, most success in the world for uh, Mathis Grenache. Thank you, man. And we'll be looking forward to a Sauvignon Blanc someday. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs>